Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Can't wait to get into today's show. This episode 3189. If you want to follow along with the top three takeaways, plus additional resources, head on over to today's show notes page, which is stephencabral.com slash 3189. Let's dive into today's topic, the top seven nutritional deficiencies leading to preventable early death. Now, This is a longer study that was done very well, published in JAMA, which is one of the most reputable, if not the most reputable journal out there. And what I want to share with you, plain and simple, is that people are not only decreasing their total lifespan, which is the number of years that they live, they're dramatically decreasing their health span as well. And that matters because I just know too many people that I've been in contact with, that I've met, that by the time they get into their later 40s, they're feeling it. And if they do live another 30 years, which is life expectancy in the US, the issue is is that they're medicated and they're just not feeling full of life. So they go through, like hopefully, what would be the best years of their life. They've worked hard, they might have a family, they've accumulated wisdom, all these things, and yet their bodies are tired, their brains are aging, the body's weak, They don't have the same endurance, stamina, and they're in pain. And I don't want that for anybody. So here is what actual, again, this is just well done science. This is actually called the state of the US health from 1990 through 2016. All of the takeaways, which has only gotten worse, unfortunately, over the past eight, nine years. Uh, But again, this goes for any Western-based world. So do take this into account. And it goes over, as I said, just massive reasons for preventable disease. I'm gonna give you all seven. So here we go. Here's the summary though from the study and I'll link it up. So this is based on 529,299 deaths during this time that were studied based on cardiovascular disease, cancers, metabolic disorders, and others such as diabetes. Now it was looked at as a person's nutrition, uh, what they were eating, how they were living, all of the different things that go along with it. And what they found is that much and many of these diseases were preventable based on very specific nutritional deficiencies. And that's what I wanna take you through right now. So here are the seven that led to all of the major cases for obesity, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, cancer, and more. They weren't really tracking Alzheimer's as much during this. Okay. The first one was this. They listed that many of these preventable early deaths, and of obviously all the chronic disease that were associated with them, was due first of seven, so there's seven, was low intake of fruit and vegetables. Now you might say, well, what, what nutrients, right? What vitamins, minerals, et cetera, are those? Well, they found the deficiency was actually in vitamin A, Vitamin C, vitamin K, potassium, and magnesium from these fruits and veggies. They didn't even they did talk about polyphenols a little bit and antioxidants because those things are so powerful for literally preventing and doing the best to prevent even things like cancer. So cardiovascular disease, diabetes. I know that a lot of people don't believe this, but the research shows that eating brightly colored fruits, believe it or not, staves off diabetes. So that means, again, I know there's carbohydrates, but this is why we really need to look at true science. Eating a couple blueberries a day helps with diabetes, helps with blood sugar. So it's important that we actually look at these things, vitally important. All right, so a lack of fruit and vegetables contributes, directly contributes to cardiovascular diseases and metabolic disorders like diabetes. And if you're worried about adding in some fruit right now to your diet because you feel that it makes you gain weight or your blood sugar spikes, add in more veggies for now and just really low glycemic fruit as you get started. Just start with a half a cup, half a cup of wild blueberries, half a cup of raspberries or blackberries or cherries or strawberries. Great place to start. Um, You can have it with a smoothie and believe it or not, blending it with a smoothie does not increase the glycemic load or glycemic index of that meal it actually has been shown to decrease it. So, important to note. All right, the second one was this. They are low in omega-3s. Omega-3s come mainly from fish, specific types of fish. Usually, if you don't want the ones with mercury, it's coming from things like wild salmon, wild 
trout, sardines, anchovies, um, and mackerel. But there are other ways to get those omega-3s as well. Just hard to get through algae and those types of things without it you know, being supplemented if you're more plant-based. Here's the issue though. When you're low on omega-3s, since the majority of the world takes in too many omega-6s, what happens is you build up massive inflammation in the body. Leads to, yes, inflammation. We'll be talking about that more in the show. But the issue is that it leads then directly, directly to cardiovascular disease, high blood pressure, cancers, type 2 diabetes, and Alzheimer's. So those are the top five leading causes of death. And low omega-3s leads directly to all of those. That's why it is one of the most popular and most important nutritional supplements. Now, let's say you don't want to supplement with omega-3s. So um, I did a bunch of shows on omega-3s. You want to get about two to three grams per day. And two grams is fine to, to stay at that higher EPA to DHA. If you eat a lot of meat, especially if it's not grass-fed, then you'll probably want to do three grams. That's the only caveat. Okay, uh, let's say you weigh over 200 pounds or so, maybe you do three grams. But let's say you wanna just get it from whole food, okay? You wanna do fish four to five times a week. Look for wild caught, so you're not getting the high omega-6s, and look for ones that are low polluted based fish and obviously um, is clean as possible. Like the wild Alaskan salmon, things like that on cleaner oceans is obviously a much better way to get it. So. I can't recommend omega-3s enough. It helps to balance omega-6s. Omega-6s are not bad. Too many omega-6s, not enough omega-3s. That's when it becomes bad. You can test your own uh, omega-3 levels by just going to, uh, well, I, I'll, I'll have you go to stephencabral.com slash labs. You'll see the omega-3 inflammation test right there if you'd like. So this will actually show you what your omega-6 to omega-3 levels are. So critical, because then you don't need to guess. You actually just can test and you can see exactly where you're at. All right. So number three is this. They lumped low calcium and vitamin D together. And the issue is that this also was related to osteoporosis. And so when there are bone-based issues, it can lead to just more weakness. And then when someone breaks their hip and they fall, they find that unfortunately they go downhill much faster. So I love calcium intake to be really from low-dose supplementation and more from food. So getting your calcium from food and some low-dose supplementation is great. Most people are going to need to supplement vitamin D. Most people wear sunscreen so they don't get sun on their skin and they don't maintain a tan. If you're not maintaining a tan or out in the sun, difficult to get your vitamin D levels up. But the nice thing is vitamin D3 is very inexpensive and easy to get. So most adults need 4,000 to 5,000 total I use per day. It's about 100 micrograms, uh, and they'll, they'll get enough of that. Okay, number four was a deficiency in iron. So this is interesting because iron absolutely, you know, low iron leads to anemia and fatigue in children, stunted growth, and in adults, it can even lead to low thyroid and metabolic issues. So really important uh, that we get enough iron, but you don't want to just start supplementing with high-dose iron. Some iron on a daily basis, we all need. Even men and postmenopausal women who aren't able to get rid of this iron, iron as easily, right? But here's the thing. We all need it. We just don't want to overdo iron. So I look for low dose in natural. So like, let's, for example, in chocolate, you're naturally getting iron, right? Like in dark green leafies, you're naturally getting iron. In our daily nutritional support, there's a little bit of natural iron just from the chocolate. Right, just from the natural cacao. So like you'll find natural iron popping up uh, even in peas. Like, so if it's pea protein, you'll have some iron in there potentially. So don't get too worried about that. Most people don't need an iron supplement unless you run your blood work on your total iron binding capacity, iron saturation, your transferritin levels, your ferritin. And, uh, and if you're low on ferritin, you may, again, I can't give you medical advice, medical treatment plans, medical diagnosis, medical cures, uh, but you may need more iron. And, and that's not a bad thing to get as well, especially when you need it, you take it. All right, number five is this. They just lump micronutrients together. I don't know how you lump all micronutrients together. Micronutrients are basically your vitamins, minerals, et cetera. But they named very specifically, they named a few. Zinc, magnesium that we talked about with the low fruits and veggies, and B vitamins. Okay, so it's important. Why? B vitamins help you to extract energy from your food, especially carbohydrates. 
So if we don't have enough B vitamins, we feel low, low in energy, low in brain capacity, even low in the ability to be able to methylate and decrease inflammation. So B vitamins, zinc, magnesium, crucial, critical. When we run labs for individuals, um, such as the vitamin tox test, which is that starter kit, we often see low magnesium, low zinc, and low B6, B12, for sure. We do see that quite often. So it's not ideal just to supplement with each one like kind of individual, but you supplement you know, as you need, and then with an overall daily activated multi or daily nutritional support or whatever the favorite product is of the integrative health practitioner that you may be working with. All right, number six on the list was fiber. And that is because there is so much research on getting in 30 to 35 grams minimum fiber per day, ideally in divided doses. That is like a, a like literally a cleaning crew, a sweeper going through the intestines, providing some good, depends if it's soluble, non-soluble. Uh, I don't want to call it food because it's not the right way to say it, for the healthy gut microbiome, but also overall for the cardiovascular system and healthy cholesterol. So I absolutely, so if, if by the way, if someone has an issue when they eat fiber, it's not fiber's fault. But people all of a sudden say, you should go on a carnivore diet. No, you should address why your body can't have fiber. Because it's most likely one of four things. It's candida yeast overgrowth. It's bacterial overgrowth in the gut. Or H. pylori. Or parasites and all of those create inflammation. It disrupts the gut microbiome and that needs to be fixed. You don't just say like, oh, you're not going to eat a whole food group because you get bloating or gas or joint pain or whatever when you eat those foods. Correct with the underlying imbalances. That's how you truly get healthy. Not just pretend that it's not there and just avoid all of those foods. That's, that's not ideal. All right. So fiber is number six. The last one, and I, I, I love that they put this. They put, not that something is missing, but something is too much. Excess refined sugar and sodium. Why? Because those two things when consumed, especially at a higher amount, like in our standard American diet, actually decrease nutrients. So the high sugar, the high sodium decreases potentially the potassium, the vitamin C, the magnesium, the B vitamins that help to buffer all of these processes within the body. So it sometimes it is about adding more. Yes, we talk about that in the rain barrel effect. Those are deficiencies, but oftentimes it's these toxicities. Contrary to popular belief, people just say, oh no, if you eat too much sodium, you just pee it all out. Well, yeah, that's true to a degree, but there are processes that have to happen within the body in order to make that happen. So it's taxing on the kidneys. It's taxing on the buffering ability of your body. And it does matter. It really does. So I'm not against sea salt by any stretch of the imagination. I'm, I'm, I'm a, a fan of it. But we've got a whole lot of people not sweating, not exercising, not even hydrating, and now they're adding more salt. Most people don't need. They're already getting 2,000 plus milligrams of sodium on a daily basis. Once people start hydrating more, they start sweating more. Okay, now they can add more sea salt to their diet. So, and then refined sugar, that's just that those are your cheats or treats or flex meals, whatever you want to call them on a weekly basis. We don't want to add a lot of refined sugar back to our diet. That's not ideal. That's certainly not something that we're going to find uh, to be healthy for our overall health. So, if you do these things though, this, how long was this study? Let's just see here. It was 26 years, so a lot of data was able to be gleaned from this. It's going to improve your overall cardiovascular capacity by improving potassium, fiber, and omega-3s. It's going to improve obesity, diabetes, metabolic conditions by not getting enough uh, fiber and the vitamins and minerals that we spoke about, by improving calcium, magnesium, uh, and I would even say, sorry, calcium, magnesium, vitamin D, vitamin K. I would say it's going to improve your overall bone health. And then not even mention all the mental health that is improved by all of these nutrients, your methylated B vitamins, your vitamin D, your magnesium, your zinc, your omega-3s, all of these have been shown to improve brain function. So hopefully today's show was helpful. I, of course, will link up all of the research at stephencabral.com slash 3 
one eight nine. I can't link up any products, but if you want to see exactly what we use in our integrative health practice, where we work with people in 27 countries all around the world, head on over to stephencabral.com slash shop. That'll just take you right over to Equal Life. You can see all of the protocols, all of the labs, everything we do, it's open source there. So even if you don't want to work with us, which is totally fine, you can work with any integrative health practitioner at integrativehealthpractitioner.org, uh, or you can work with your local naturopathic doctor, wherever you want to work with. Great. I just want to share with you exactly what we do so that you have more knowledge as to what the protocols are that really are helping people. We've been doing this a long time. We're working with hundreds of thousands of people. We just want to get that education out there. So once again, stephencabral.com slash 3189 for all the show notes. Take care, everybody. Have an amazing rest of the day. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.